This video is being recorded directly after my last video. I am still sweating. If you haven't seen my last video, please, please go and check it out and make my torture worth it. And welcome back to Bug Realms. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly. So if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. So today we're going to have a little look at Coffee Table Enclosure 2.0. I'm going to reveal to you which other animal has been coexisting in there alongside our Anthea sex maculata, which are our Egyptian predatory beetles. But the reason I'm going to give you this update, I've been waiting a long, long time because I wanted to include more of this other species inside that tank before I actually showed off my plan. But sadly, it's got to a stage where I'm actually giving up, I think, on the idea of our coexisting coffee table enclosure 2.0 setup. It was a lot of hard work. But this is why I need you guys, I need you to help me come up with a new idea for Coffee Table Enclosure 2.0. Now please keep watching before you put your ideas in the comments below because I want to explain why what I've got in is not so viable to me as a keeper right now and what sort of things I will refuse to have in Coffee Table Enclosure 2.0. First of all, let's go and check out Coffee Table Enclosure and uh, have a look at our beetles and find out what's been living with them. Right, everything is a mess here, and you'll know why if you watched the previous video. I hate them, I hate them. <laughs> oh, anyway, coffee table enclosure is now here amongst the mess. Now, problem one I have is this. This happens daily. So this is actually all three Egyptian predatory beetles. Normally it's just the one. Fall down this lip that stops the sand coming out. Now they can get out, you see, there's a path that side. And there's a path the other side, a little bit smaller that side. But there's a full path here. But this is a common occurrence. And I've had them sit here a couple of times for hours on end. Up. Look, they can do it. Look, see? See? He can do it. He can do it. So what I normally do with a straw is I go underneath them and I lift them. Like so. Come on, dude. Look, he's determined to remain stuck. Get out of there. My goodness. So yes, here is a look at one. Beautiful, beautiful beetle. Savage as well, they've already eaten. This is their dinner pile. So there's scraps of old bits and bobs here. I'll clean this out every fortnight. Um, but I leave it all in one pile so I can scoop it out with the sand. So they often all, excuse the glare, all hunt within that pile and they're pretty quick to get to the prey. So that's never been an issue, don't you think about it, get back in there. But the problem is I actually only have three of these beetles left. So we did have five in here and two of them died, one of them got eaten by the rest and the other I just found dead with missing legs, whether he was attacked by them first or whether they ate parts of him after he died is unknown to me. But the problem I have is having three beetles remaining in here is just not viable for the size of enclosure that it is. Of course we have the other animal which I'm yet to find but it is in here somewhere, we'll have a look in a moment. It's just not good enough. Now. I was thinking over time I can collect maybe 20 beetles to live in here, but at £9 each, guys, that's an awful lot of money. And then comes the other problem, which is actually the other species that's been happily living with these guys. Let me just try and find it for you, show it off for you, tell you what it is, and tell you why that is also not particularly viable. Oh, hello. Hello. You're one of the smallest ones, but you seem to have survived. Don't go down there. If you go down there, I swear I will leave you there. There's something wrong with you. It really is. Ah, oh, beautiful though, right? Stay, no. No. Naughty. In. 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 No, in. In. 
Look, they're just, they just constantly are trying. This one just went down halfway down there as well. Urgh, I'm getting frustrated. So yes, that's problem number one. Problem two is to fill these with these beetles. It's going to be too costly. Problem three, let's find the other inhabitant. I found more roaches. More roaches from the last video. You slimy little... Oh my God, my recording's terrible lately. I'm sorry about that. I've caught those two roaches. Hopefully there's no more. So I've taken the lid off of this and I've trashed everything around me yet again to get those roaches. Now I can't find the other inhabitant right now, but it does sometimes lurk underneath here. But I really don't want to destroy this yet. Not till we know what's happening in the future. I might just have to tell you what's in here. That would be a shame. I tell you what, I'm going to have a rummage off the camera and see if I can find it. Right, new name for me, the unprepared YouTuber. So while catching those roaches, this pro tree beetle escaped, I left the door open. <sighs> this is not my day for filming. It really, really isn't. Right, you can stay there for a moment, sunshine. Back to trying to find the other invert. So after destroying their home completely to try and find it, here it is. Does anyone remember this? It's our blue vein death beetle. So this was the only one that we have. We had two to start with. One of them unfortunately died for an unknown reason before it cohabited. I actually had these guys cohabiting with the Egyptian protea beetles in their small enclosure for four months and this guy has now been living with our Egyptian predatory beetles for, well, since I created Coffee Table Enclosure 2.0. I just didn't show you that I'd introduced him. So, before he falls off, because I'm stood up. <laughs> That's right. The predatory beetles, oh, sorry, dude. The predatory beetles do not even bother these. I witnessed one attempt to nip, but the exoskeleton of these blue fane death beetles is far too powerful for the Egyptian poetry beetles to get through. So anybody keeping both, you can happily keep them together. This guy forages a lot off of the carcasses of their food that they leave behind. Another reason why I leave it two weeks at a time before I change it out. So other than a bit of curiosity from the beetles, attempting a nip very rarely, there's no other problems that have been caused by keeping these together. Now, this is why this is another problem. It's back down to finances, ladies and gentlemen. So not only would we have to spend a fortune to get all our predatory beetles, oh, there's a cockroach there, but we would have to spend an absolute fortune on these too. Now these go in between 15 and 16 pounds. If I wanted to get 20 of these, I'm spending over £300, folks. Don't you be stupid as well, please. Don't you be stupid as well, please. Down you go. And that's it. They are the reasons. I've destroyed this home. I need to put it back together. These are the reasons why Coffee Table Enclosure 2.0, as it is, as it stands, is no longer viable to me. Purely because of cost alone. Now you could think that, yeah, I could get a couple of these at a time and slowly build it up, which was my thought originally too. But I just never got round to it. When I go to shows, there's all these new exciting things that I want to buy, and I just don't have the money aside for these. And to do them step by step, little by little, it's just not as exciting or thrilling to me as a keeper to do it that way. I would rather get everything all at once to put into here. And this is why I have failed with this idea. So, while I put that home back together, I'm going to explain what I'm looking for from you guys. So what is it exactly I'm asking from you folks here today? Well, first of all, I can't remember how this goes together now. Uh, I'll fiddle around. <laughs> so what is it I'm asking help from from you guys today? But ultimately, an idea for this. I will still keep these animals, I will still keep them cohabiting, but I will do so on a smaller scale. I will put them back into uh, their original sort of size vivarium, where they will all live happily, 
I'll give enough hiding space for everybody so that the coexistence continues to be a happy one. So we can still always look at these wonderful animals and I still truly love keeping them. And if I did want to get more, so be it. A smaller enclosure is enough space for these guys. So what I'm asking from you, give me ideas of what can go in coffee table enclosure 2.0. Now, I'll tell you some things I will not accept to have in here, and that is any communals like I already have. So I already have isopod and roach communals. So I don't want anything like that in here. Now, I know a lot of you are probably thinking Balfouri communal. Again, I don't want a Balfouri communal in here. The reason being is anything that breeds and can have small young living in this enclosure needs to be closely monitored. And if I were to end up with mature Balfouri, breeding and having a sack hidden that I was unaware of and the spiderlings emerge, they're going to get through the gaps in the door. So the doors are like your snake vivariums, wooden vivariums, they slide into each other, leaving a minute gap. Another reason why isopods cannot go into here or roaches that have small young. So the reason I chose Egyptian predatory beetles was because they do not breed in captivity. And I chose the famed death beetle because it, has a, it can live in a similar habitat to them and they're not easy to breed in captivity. So I had no worries of small animals being able to escape through the gaps. So Balfouri is off the record, Roach Communal is off the record, and anything that requires a deep substrate. You see this has a thin metal layer base underneath this sand, and sand is heavy, hence why it's no more than that thick in this enclosure, and why I provided so much hiding space under the cardboard because I cannot allow something to burrow in here, or at least not burrow deeply. So that leaves out things like our millipedes, for example. Now also, it's about eight inches tall for the actual enclosure part itself, a little bit bigger than my hand from here to about here, meaning we can't have anything that needs to live arboreally either. So I know I'm asking for a lot from you guys, but I really would warmly welcome any suggestions of how to change this. The only other method I can think of is finding other animals that can coexist with these. And I originally thought about a certain species of desert scorpion was going to be the third. Now a scorpion is not likely to bother our famed death beetle. However, it may well strike out to our predatory beetles. If I got a small scorpion, it's likely the predatory beetles will at least try and nip it and in turn that scorpion is going to fight back and one of these animals is going to end up dying and that's not something I really want to be happening in coffee table enclosure 2.0. So I'm asking for a lot I know but as I said any suggestions in the comments below will be warmly warmly welcomed especially after the rough day I've had today. Trashed me room looking for cockroaches, trashed their home looking for one blue vein death beetle I'm quite disheartened today, I'm going to tell you that now. It's been a rough one. So that's going to be it from me in today's video. Please talk to your friends and family as well. Get some ideas gathered up as much as possible. If you do not want to comment your idea below, you can PM me on Facebook, on Instagram, or you can contact me via email. So yes, please fire, fire, fire suggestions for me. It's a lovely, large enclosure. It just can't have anything too deep anything too heavy and there are restrictions on animals that give birth to tiny tiny young worst case scenario i take your suggestion on board and i glue the door shut because i can always access coffee table enclosure from the top so if we really cannot think of anything and it comes to the fact i have to glue the doors i really really would rather not but if it came to that then so be it i just don't want this space wasted as it were anymore on listening to beetles try and scutter up a wall that they deliberately are climbing over when I'm trying to sleep at night. <laughs> so yes, if you want to see what else dwells in the realm, make sure to pop back weekly for multiple videos. Thanks for watching everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.